All of this over a t-shirt. A t-shirt. A t-shirt design. Now, if you ignore all of the years of historical evidence about the WWE and how they treat performers from certain racial and ethnic backgrounds, that's basically how you would look at this. All of this, Jordan Miles' meltdown on Twitter, is all over a dang t-shirt. If you want to be that simple-minded about it, you can be that simple-minded about it, that it's just about a t-shirt. But it is about way, way more than that. And I know that any time I come on here, especially for pertaining to professional wrestling, and I talk about anything dealing with any racial or ethnic or cultural issues, that is going to bring out the wide swath of stupidity across the spectrum of professional wrestling fans. You're going to have those white liberal SJW cucks that are going to talk to me and say, well, you were born white. You are part of the problem. You are racist. Never mind that racism is a learned behavior based off of experiences of life, based off of uh, what you see in your environment, the beliefs and foundations that your parents and other figures in your life set for you. Nobody is born racist. You learn these behaviors. You are taught these behaviors by a system and so on and so forth. Some of the most ridiculous things that anybody's going to say. Then I'll have those white guys, the Trumpers that will sit there and call me a race traitor and on other things I won't even reference. They'll call me a cock. They'll call me an SJW. God forbid it is an evil thing to acknowledge the fact that there are still fundamental flaws in our society. There is still systemic racism in place. And just because you choose to turn a blind eye to that does not mean that that's not true. Then you will have, unfortunately, some black fans who will then come at me and say, well, you're white, you're part of the problem, which is incredibly ignorant as well. You can totally be the victim of systemic racism and also perpetuate some of the problems as well. It's just a thought. It's just a thought. And sometimes it's not just white people that contribute to some of the problems. See somebody like a Kanye West, for example. So knowing going into this, that the comment section to this video is going to be absolute diarrhea, I proceed. Jordan Miles, man. You really wanted to make a statement. This really got you in your feelings. This really got you upset and pissed off. And here's my thing. Is... One, you're a black man who chose to go to WWE. How stupid could you be to have this surprise you in any way, shape, or form? I mean, let's call it as we see it first. You have to have known the company's history. This shouldn't surprise you. I don't care if they gave you the design ahead of time and you approved it, but on a white or a gray black background instead of the black one, and then once they put it on the black one, Da, 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 da. That doesn't even matter. Like, you should have been conscientious yourself to begin with to have seen what this company was going for and had the wherewithal and the awareness your damn self to say something to begin with and say, oh, hell to the no! But only once, when they put it on the black background, the black t-shirt, where you can clearly see what this looked like. And if you don't understand what type of minstrel shit this looks like, then educate yourself a little bit on American history, okay? Like, all of a sudden now, he's going to make a big deal about it. All of a sudden now, it's a problem. Which to me almost seems more like the guy is unhappy there and he's just wanting to get a way out, and he's looking for a way out. I can't blame him. I mean, I can't blame him. Because sometimes you think the grass is greener on the other side, and then once you get there, you realize just how bad things really are. And I gotta say, I applaud the arrogance of somebody to sit there and compare themselves to Tupac and quote Tupac and talk about he's gonna be the brain that sparks change. No, the fuck, you're not. Shut up. You're not. 
of all the people of all the years, black, white, and alike, that have said these types of things about WWE, talked about their history of racism, talked about how in some cases they will actually push people because of their race. See somebody from a Mexican background, a Hispanic black background, Latin background, Indian background, for example, and then saddle other races and ethnicities and national origins with all of these stereotypical horse shit gimmicks. See black wrestlers. See Asian wrestlers. After all this time, of all these years, of all of these people, of all these fans, of all these wrestlers talking about this shit, you're going to be the brain that sparks change. Like, that is Triple H level arrogance and ego there. Like, I almost admire the magnificence of the delusion of he actually thinks this crap is true. As long as Vince lives, as long as Hunter is still there, ain't none of this crap changing, bro. Accept it. No, don't accept it. Understand it. Because you shouldn't have to accept it. Of that, I will definitely give you. And in the grand scheme of things, you look at this and you say, why is he making such a big fuss? Why is he making such a big deal? You know, try walking a mile in his shoes. If you're a black wrestler in WWE, you know more likely than not you are going to get saddled with one of these stereotypical type of gimmicks because that's all Vince thinks that black people are, especially black men. That's exactly what he thinks. Like if you go throughout the history, at one point in time they were going to try and call Mark Henry the fucking silverback. The silverback! They were going to compare Mark Henry to a goddamn gorilla and you can't see what the problem is here? All these black wrestlers that have been given these suspect-ass sissy types of gimmicks. All of these black wrestlers that they've had rapping. All these black wrestlers that they've had dancing and smiling and doing little minstrel shit. If you can't see and understand the problem, then there is a problem with you. Acknowledging and accepting that there is a deep-seated fundamental problem here does not make you racist. Not accepting it, not acknowledging it, makes you complicit in it. It's a big difference, but it still matters. And, and when you look at this, you have your own eyes to see, oh, there's a black guy lusting after a white woman. As all this shit's going down, you literally have the Lana and freaking Bobby Lashley storyline. Vince McMahon and the WWF slash WWE have a long, proud history and tradition of giving stereotypical gimmicks to black wrestlers. You can look at black wrestlers that had equivalent talent levels, if not superior talent levels, to other white wrestlers that were given half the opportunities. And when you look at some of the lame-ass white guys that have been given world titles over the years, Jack Swagger, Dolph Ziggler, I could go on and on and on. The hell fundamentally is so different between a Jack Swagger and let's say a Shelton Benjamin or an MVP. MVP actually had personality. Shelton Benjamin was vastly superior in the ring. Why can a guy like a Sheamus or so many others get a title in a few months, but it takes Kofi 11 damn years and Big E still ain't sniffing the title picture? I mean, there's something to it. I and mean, even when you look back here, you look at look at my wall. Like, I took the Hogan poster down. Because on the one hand, he had meant a lot to my life for me as a wrestling fan and just in general. It meant a lot to me because a lot of things happened, a lot of good things happened because of my association with professional wrestling, which came due to being a fan of Hulk Hogan. But what type of message am I sending? Where on the one hand, I believe that people deserve a chance at redemption. They deserve second chances. They absolutely positively do. The cancel culture that we have in our society is way too prevalent and is counterproductive. If people can't learn from their mistakes, if they cannot improve, then who are we and what are we? But I also realized that over the past couple of years, Hogan's been more sorry for being caught than for actually what he said. And even just looking at this wall in general, like you got homophobe warrior back there and just all these other guys. It's like even The Rock, I could say, yeah, he's front and center. 
but he was half Samoan, and according to the company, and usually him, unless he's getting ready to guest star next or star next to Kevin Hart in a movie, he's always Samoan first. And this back here, this wall, is indicative of what wrestling has been over the years. It's been a white man's business. It's been a white man's sport, a white man's form of entertainment. And kind of reflecting upon it and trying to learn, like I should have posters of Mark Henry back there. Even if I didn't get a custom made one, I should have one back there of JYD. I most certainly should have some type of poster of Eddie freaking Guerrero. And I have none of that. None of that. Now, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with being a fan of white wrestlers. White and black people alike could be that. But when I look at the wall, it is more of a representation, if anything else, for the most part, of my experience as a wrestling fan in my life. And so when I see Jordan Miles going off on this, I, I get it. I totally understand it. Maybe not the best way to approach it, but especially if he's desperately trying to get out of there. I get it. What I don't get is how people can't see the problem with this. Now, sure, you could say, well, dumbass, you approved the shirt design first and then you had a problem with it. That's a valid question. I'm not going to dismiss that as a valid question. But it speaks to a larger, deeper-seated issue within WWE that they even came up with the damn design to begin with. The fact that they have nobody there as a checks or balance, nobody there throughout that process of the design and so forth, that's after it said, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's going to fly. I think that could potentially be bad. It speaks to the lack of overall awareness. And even with the WWE, with all of their checkered past and all of their documented history and all the different organizations calling them out about their treatment specifically towards black wrestlers and no, a five to six month title reign for Kofi Kingston does not change anything. So stop that. Then they come out and release a statement on Twitter where they basically pass the buck, which is pathetically predictable pattern of behavior for WWE, onto Jordan Miles, ACH, and make it about him. Instead of owning up to it and saying, we should have never designed this to begin with! And that's where the frustration comes in. It's like, on the one hand, for any black wrestler that goes to WWE, you could go through all the gimmicks throughout the years, and I do not need to name them, because people will in the comment section, and they provide enough evidence. It's on and on and on and on. It's consistent. It's historical precedent. It's a trend. It's a pattern. It's a disturbing trend and a pattern at that. Yeah. Unfortunately, you have to know what you're getting into when you sign with that company. You are not going to get a fair shake. You are going to be viewed as a second-class citizen. That is a fact. That is reality. And you have to know that. Now, there is something to be said about you go in there and you try to be the change that you seek and make the change that you seek happen. But sometimes that only goes so far. And sometimes that only matters so much. The Rock, for God's sakes, had to embrace his Samoan heritage in order for D Vince and WWE to overlook the fact that his daddy was Rocky Soul Man Johnson. This company has no problem pushing Samoans. They have no problem pushing Mexicans or Hispanic wrestlers. When it comes to black wrestlers, it comes to Asian wrestlers, they got issues. They absolutely have issues. But... If you go there, you have to know what you're getting into. That doesn't make it okay. That doesn't make it right. That doesn't mean you shouldn't have the opportunity to pursue a better life for yourself. I'm not saying that. It's just when stuff like this happens, you shouldn't be surprised. And the whole notion that some might say, well, if it bothers you that much, why would you bother watching anymore? Why do you support it? That also is a fair and valid question. That can't be easily dismissed. The problem with that, though, is that if we go based off of all these different sports, all these different forms of entertainment, if I based it just off of racist past, I couldn't watch anything. And even in general, if we go off of the here and now, it would really significantly reduce and limit my viewing experiences or my ability to enjoy any sport or any form of entertainment. So at some point in time, by God, I got to be able to have something. Just because the industry is racist doesn't make me racist. 
And at least I have tried to use whatever pathetically little sized platform I've had over the years to try to bring some of these issues to light. At least try to help. At least try to do something. And of course, it's never good enough because for some, I'm white and I'm part of the problem. And then for others, because I don't agree with everything from the white guy's perspective, I'm a problem. You know, I get it for white people that this bothers because you're tired in your own way, in your own world, where life is enough of a battle and a struggle for you, and I get that, and believe me, I get that. It's hard when you're struggling to survive and get by to have everybody else tell you how you're contributing to the problem when you can barely pay your rent and pay, barely provide for your family, barely provide basic needs for your kids, barely squeak by. The last thing you want to hear about is how you're contributing to other people's problems when you can't even get past your own problems yourself. I get that. And I understand it. And it's part of my reality too. But that doesn't change the fact that other people have issues that are different and even worse from ours. If I go up to a cop with a knife in my hand, they might pepper spray me. They might mace me. If I'm black, and in my bedroom, they might shoot me dead. Can you see the difference here? So unfortunately, you're in a no-win situation. It's there. As far as Jordan Miles and this whole thing, he ain't the first to talk about it. He won't be the last to talk about it. He is in no way, shape, or form the brain that sparks any goddamn thing. I agree with the notion of white people should not be telling black people how to feel about this because they don't have that same experience. That is absolutely true. I share how I feel about it, and that's it. I can't tell black people how to feel about it. My experience is not theirs necessarily. They should not be able to tell me that I can't have an opinion on it. That's also crap. White people should not just sit there and automatically say, get defensive, I'm going to put you to prep and there's nothing going on here. You have to be delusional and dumb to not see what is so strikingly obvious. Remove your blinders and see what reality is. It doesn't make you guilty of it for acknowledging what is real. It makes you complicit in it if you don't. I wouldn't be surprised if Vince releases this Jordan Miles kid as soon as today. I wouldn't be surprised if he keeps him around because he's going to troll him and he's going to F with him because that's the type of crap that Vince does. Instead of using this as an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to grow and an opportunity to damn it be better, nothing is going to change. Shame on all of us for allowing it to be this way for this long.